What's up ladies and gentlemen, how are you all tonight? And welcome to another episode of Phenomenal Views. Now, this is not a movie review. This is another book review. I finally got done finishing the first, my the very, my very first time ever reading a book from my one of my favorite authors, Steve Walton, the guy who wrote the Meg series. I still have not got to read that yet. I really want to, but I have always wanted to read something from him, and I finally got to, and I finally finished it. The Lock is a good water thriller story. Um, only things that I had trouble with it was some history about Scotland, and I just didn't really care. But um, this move, this book actually does have some connections to Braveheart, uh, the Templars, and it's really, really good. I was the only times I was bored in this book was when it was stuff like about there's um, there were some stuff I skipped like uh, some chapters would have stuff from William Wallace and I just didn't want to read that, but. Um, the fact that it has some connections to Braveheart is really interesting. And the Templars, even. Okay, so for those who don't know, The Lock is a, is a story about this, um, about this man named Zachary Wallace, who lives in Scotland. Uh, he has a bad relationship with his father. Uh, his father practically kind of doesn't really show him any love. Um, and he's trying throughout his whole entire life to basically get his father's approval. He never does. But he becomes a smart kid, and he even um, goes to he goes to a very good college, and he becomes a very young scientist. And he journeys down to the ocean, where he comes across a giant squid, and this scares him to death. He almost dies. Actually, he does die, but he's brought back to life. He he drowns, but he comes back. Um. Now, this, if you, any of you who've seen the cover, this book is about the Loch Ness Monster. Now, one thing that I have always known Stephen Olton to do is his explanations for how creatures get to where they are. Uh, for example, uh, in the Meg series, he reveals in the book that they find the Megalodon and all the other prehistoric creatures in the Marianas Trench. This talks about how the Loch Ness Monster got stuck in in the in Lake Loch Ness. And so it's very interesting. I'm not going to tell you how, because I really want you all to read this book. But so, this guy is very smooth with women. I I'm just going to tell you that right now. But after the giant squid incident, he has night terrors, especially with water. So, there's, a, there's, a, there's two scenes in this book where he is the first one it's just like this random girl on the beach he talks to her and she om he almost has sex with her in the ocean and like it goes into detail like how she takes off her bra and like how they're getting ready to have sex and then he he starts freaking out because of the water and that was one time the, the first time and then the other time is after he goes back to Scotland now the reason he actually goes back to Scotland is because his dad uh, is put on trial and he is having to be questioned and his dad wants his son to stand up for him to come to the bench or approach yeah come come to the bench and basically make him innocent be a witness and he runs into his old friend true who he then meets his hot sister brandy and, like, during, like, their first date, they almost have sex. And he panics and freaks out again, and she's pissed off at him. And so, like, during, like, this whole book, like, he's trying to discover... He's trying to discover the mysteries of, like, Loch Ness. Um, the statement that his father makes is his former friend, or his former business partner, owed him money, and they got in a fight... He pushed him into the river, or in the yeah, into the river, and the Loch Ness monster killed him. So now it's up to it's up to Zachary Wallace to figure out if his father is really telling the truth to set him free. And he comes across a lot of hard obstacles in this book. This book has great underwater terror. Um and like just some explanations, they actually explain what the Loch Ness monster is and why it's so big. Um, in the 
in this book, they say that there is this massive oil leak that goes on forever. Like, it's... Someone has been paying off the government to allow him to pollute the pollute Loch Ness. So, uh, he finds this eel and he finds that there's oil in its blood. And it changes it. And it makes it hostile. And so, he discovers that Loch Ness is not a dinosaur. She's actually a very... She's a... She is a water creature, but she's not a dinosaur. She's not a mutant. She's not a freak of... Well, she's a mutant, but she's not a freak of nature. Um, and the reason why she's so big is because she is a... Well, of course, she's a female. And they say that the species that she is, the females are bigger than the males. And so they can only produce if they're in regular water or if they're in salt water and the lake that she is in she cannot give birth and that's why she's so big is she cannot give birth and so she's trapped there she used to be able to travel back and forth but some but some blockage has kept her from going back out into the main sea and so the oil in this river is making her bloodthirsty it's making all the creatures in the Loch Ness bloodthirsty as for kills, oh, this book has some terrifying kills. Um, it, it, it's just really terrifying. It really makes me. It really takes me back to Jaws um, with these kills. There is, there's this one where this family is camping on uh, near Loch Ness. Well, the dad is letting the kids swim out in the uh, in the river for a little while, and the mom goes back. Well, then the dad takes the kids back, and they're all sleeping in the tent, but the, the mom wants to go on a walk for a little bit. She wants to go by herself. And as soon as I started reading this, I was like, oh, crap, she's going to die, she's going to die, she's going to die, she's going to die. And it builds up the suspense, because she, the Loch Ness Monster does leave. It's like a big serpent dinosaur. It can walk. And so she's walking, and then, it, of course, it's like in the middle of the night, and it's thundering and lightning, and they play on the fact like she could only see it when lightning struck. And it was just pure terror. It really took me to Jurassic. It even took me to Jurassic Park. And so, like, the next thing it just says is you just hear her scream. Uh, actually... That goes back to the first Friday the 13th. There is a scene in this in this movie where, of course, you know, people are getting killed. But this one counselor, she goes out in the rain and all the lights turn on and you know what happens, but you don't see it. That's what they do in this book. It describes um, how the death is, but even in this death, you know what happens, but no one sees it. And her body is mangled, big time. And so because they know that Zachary is a former scientist, he's not anymore because of how broken he is from his night terrors and all the things that he has suffered from his ex fiance who was just dating him to get a good grade and left him when he was in the hospital, almost on his deathbed. She left him for somebody else. And he is just a broken man. He's drinking. He can barely sleep. And his relationship with his father is a bad one. It is not good. Not until at least until later on in the book. They, there is a lot of mystery in this book. And I could honestly just not put it down. I am so glad I finally got to read a book from Stephen Alton. I give this book, and honestly, I give this book an 8 out of 9 out of 10. A 9 out of 10. Only thing that kept me from giving it a 10 out of 10 is I just didn't really care for the history of Scotland. But, you know, but but that's just me. Other than that, this book is a great book to have to your collection. Um, and we even come to find out that his former best friend, uh, who helped him on the giant squid, has taken credit for his discovery, has taken credit for everything that he's done. He even gets Brandy, 
And there's an emotional battle like where he gets with his friend and he's like, you better not hurt her. And then he admits, he's like, I'm in love with her. And it's not until when he saves them from... Okay, basically... He, his former best friend, or his former uh, partner, wants to capture the Loch Ness Monster, of course, and put her on an attraction. So he has this idea where he's going to lure her into a cage and bring her up. When he gets her in there, she gets so angry and frustrated, she busts through, and he starts to get dragged down. He gets caught in the net that she was in. And Brandy tries to help him, but she gets uh, stuck too. And it's when this is when he, when Zachary finally conquers his fears and he jumps into the water, swimming in the waters of Loch Ness, cold as ever. And he saves her. And then I was able to sing a song. You got laid. You got laid. In the book that I was reading, you got laid. You got laid. You got laid. In the book that I read, you got laid. Him and Brandy do get together. And it was just so nice for him to finally catch a break. Um, but he still even has night terrors. And even to, like, it's so bad that for once, he's not comforting Brandy. But Brandy comforts him. And, I mean, of course, she's his girlfriend. But just the way how they talk about how she does it is really cool. It's really, really heartfelt. Brandy is an awesome character. She is a she has had a tough life. Her mom died when she was younger and she suffered a horrible divorce, but she does not let that get her down. Even though she's depressed, she faces her demons and it makes her a very strong character. And I really liked that about her. Um things between him and his between Zachary and his dad do change for the better. Uh, Zachary becomes a hero when he kills the Loch Ness Monster by taking the Braveheart sword and stabbing it in the monster's head. And his father labels him from now on in his life as the Dragon Slayer. And it was just so, it was just such amazing. There, It was so amazing from the mysteries that are in this book. When you read them, they have you hooked, line and sinker. I certainly recommend you go and pick up this book and here it says riveting i'm glad i'm not in a boat at the lock tonight george nori host of coast to am loch ness holds secrets ancient and deadly does a monster inhabit its depths or is it just a myth guys this book is something that you must read if you love stuff like this this will not disappoint you this will really not disappoint you but guys, um, probably the next book I am going to be reading is probably Assassin's Creed Unity. I'm going to be continuing the Assassin's Creed series. But put in the comments below, what if you have read The Lock, what did you think of it? I really want to know, what did you think about the mystery with the Templars and and the, the origin of the Loch Ness Monster? I really want to know. I love this book. I really want to know what you all think. Guys, have a good night and enjoy your summer.